Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. One of the many announcements from BlizzCon this year is the release date of Phase 2 for Classic World of Warcraft, which is set to be on the 12th of this month. This phase brings two world bosses, Azurgos and Kazakh, an end to the layering system, as well as the PvP honor system, so I thought it was appropriate to make a little preparation video for you, since there are some things that you can do to get ready for it and save yourself some time, money, and also a bit of frustration. First things first is layering. Not really much you can do to prepare for this I think really, other than the fact that she can't abuse it anymore, but maybe some gathering items might go up in price as there'll be one less copy of the world to gather from. Possibly some gold making potential there? I don't think anyone really knows for sure though, so use your own judgement. Let's cover world bosses next though. First off, in the description I'll have links to the loot table of these world bosses for you to go see if there's anything that you like. Kazakh spawns in this location to the south in the Blasted Lands, and Azurgos spawns over here in southeast Ashara. Don't confuse him with the spirit of Azurgos, which wanders about the area. This only appears once he's dead, and is later used for the AQ-40 Scepter quest chain. So, to prepare for this, something you can do for your guild is to park an alt near their spawn locations. This was a common strategy for guilds back in the day. Members were tasked to have an alt near spawn points so you can quickly check at any point to see if they're up, and if they are, rally your guild together as fast as possible to kill them. You have to be fast though, because you surely won't be the only one doing this. For those of you on PvP servers, obviously be ready to bring it with consumes and whatnot. Speaking of which though, let's get into PvP since that's the meat of this video. So, the rank 14 honor system. Just as it was released in 2004, the game currently has no honor system in place. The only reward for PvP is just that, PvP. However, on the 12th, you'll be rewarded with honorable kills whenever you slay an enemy that's your level. That is, their number still shows up as green. And depending on how many points you get on a weekly basis, you'll rank up or down and gain access to various rewards. Now, this is its own whole subject, but that's the basic gist of things. I am planning on making a full honor system guide where I'll go into more detail, so keep an eye out for that on the channel pretty soon. But suffice to say, particularly those on a PvP server, things are going to be insane. A lot of the times, at least on my server, people sort of give you a pass, more focusing on questing or just getting where they need to go, but now that you award those valuable points, you can expect people to go out of their way to kill you. So let's make sure we're prepared, shall we? The first thing that anyone will tell you is to level Engineer. This is before a time where professions are hyper-balanced with each other. Engineer in particular has huge advantages over the rest for both PvE and PvP, but it really shines in PvP. Not only do you have grenades, usable at range while moving that deal some good damage and also incapacitate enemies for a few seconds, but you also have a variety of gadgets such as the cloaking device which serves as a vanish, the netomatic projector which can root enemies, or yourself if it backfires, the death ray for some damage at range, the frost, fire, and shadow reflectors which are insanely useful, speed boots for that quick burst on the fly, the rocket helmet for the ranged incapacitate, and many many more. It's insane how good it is for PvP, so if you want to do the best, it'll be very helpful to level that up now to even the playing field and also just stock up on the expendable stuff. Iron grenades are your cheapest option, and thorium gives you a bit more bang, but costs a lot more. And goblin sapper charges are a must for large scale open world pvp, or just some burst in general. And the next thing on your list is a fap. And after that are free action potions. On use, it doesn't clear, but prevents all slows, roots, and stuns on your character for 25 seconds. These are insanely useful for any PvP situation, and people will be popping these like crazy come phase 2. And in the same vein, limited invulnerability potions are a pretty hot ticket PvP item. Immune to physical attacks for the next 6 seconds. Pretty self explanatory, except that you're not pacified for the duration like you might expect. If you don't buy these before phase 2, at least now you know of their existence so you can realize what's happening when someone else uses them. And healing potions as well. Pretty straightforward. I'm not sure about the market shifts on this one as it's not tied to just PvP, but still, probably worth picking up now just to be safe. 
And just in general, gold farming right now is going to be advantageous if you do plan on ranking. Ranking anything past 10 becomes extremely competitive, and any time spent farming gold to keep yourself stocked up on all of this stuff is time you could be spent PvPing and getting honor kills. You don't earn any gold at all from PvPing Classic, so do yourself a favor and stock up on last minute gold to make sure that you can grind without going broke. And next, you have your epic mount. Kind of dual purpose here. One, to get away from people, and two, to chase down people. It is pretty much a must for PvP servers, or else you'll just be left in the dust. In addition to this, I also recommend picking up three different items to increase your mounted speed even further. One is, if you're a blacksmith, a pair of boots with the mithril spurs attached to them. These increase your mounted speed by 8%. And next is a pair of gloves with the riding skill enchant. This is another 4%. And lastly is the 3% carried on a stick trinket, which you get from the Gazrilla quest in Zulfarak. You get the quest itself from the Shimmering Flats. In total, this is 15% mounted speed with the spurs and 7 without, and it's pretty noticeable actually. If you're worried about item swapping, an add-on that I always tout is called Item Rack. This allows you to quickly equip any set of gear from the stuff in your bags, even being key bindable. I have my bind set to shift 1 through 5 if you're curious. I got my PvE set, the PvP set, and I'm also working on some Frost and Shadow Resist. Super handy for PvP, and also just weird stuff such as a mount speed set. Casting bars are also going to be a must. This isn't part of the default interface in Classic, so it's pretty crucial for PvP especially. There are a few different ones, but I'll have the one that I use in the description, along with the rest of these add-ons of course. And aura durations are also super handy for PvP. By default, you just get this little icon until they disappear, but this add-on gives you a visual cue when they're about to run out. It's useful for knowing when to reapply that hamstring or whatever. I also use Dismounter. You may have noticed that to use any ability, you have to manually dismount first. This one just auto-dismounts you when you try to cast any spells, so it's just a convenience thing. Omnibar is an add-on that tracks enemy cooldowns. A mage uses Frost Nova, and you know when it's up again. Pretty self-explanatory. And Trinket Menu is going to be a must as well, especially if you're an engineer. This just gives you a little interface to quickly switch trinkets on the fly, even allowing you to queue them up to switch as soon as you drop combat. It's very simple. You just left click to put it in your first slot, and right click to set it to the second. And a Swing Timer is an add-on that I recommend to pretty much any melee class. It tracks the timing of the next swing of both you and your target, so it's just handy for kiting. There's a mini game called Jousting that you'll want to do as melee. Basically you go in when your bar is full, and you stay out when your enemy's bar is full. It gives you a big edge in melee fights, or avoiding days when trying to go from point A to point B. And speaking of which though, getting every flight path is something you should knock out as well. There's a PvP raid going down, and your friends need you, and you don't have the flight paths, so now you need to walk all the way there. Save yourself some time now, and knock those out. No one really knows what the meta will be for world PvP ranking, as far as group size is concerned, but I think it's wise to start searching for a team now to have it in your back pocket. I think that maybe groups of 3 to 5 would be ideal. Too many, and the points are split too much, and too few, you'll just get outnumbered. A good composition of a healer and some DPS with some good CC is going to be your best bet. And just in general, it's good to make friends now so that when BGs are released, you have a team lined up for you. Now is also the time to make sure you have your PvP set. In Classic, with things being so bursty, stamina is king, at least for me as a warrior, so give an extra look through all of the dungeon loot and whatnot, and try to get those before the 12th if you can. And also don't forget your enchants. The Librams of Constitution are nice because they give 100 health to head and legs. That's my personal choice for PvP at least. And also don't forget the niche stuff such as resistance sets. Shadow for warlocks and priests, and frost and fire for mages, and so on. And lastly, the final tip is to just get out there and practice. PvP is a skill just like anything in life, so the more you do it, the better you'll be. It's as simple as that. So get off this video. Go outside Ironforge or Orgrimmar and level up your game so you can sufficiently know life it and be the best around so no one can ever take you down. Before you do though, give the video a like if you liked it or found it helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.
Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.